What's going on fellow backpackers? My name is Dan. So you recently bought an inReach or you're thinking about buying one and you have no clue which subscription plan you should go with. Well, I spent some time crunching the numbers to help figure out which plan is best for you. So in this video, we're gonna go over Garmin subscription plans in full detail, and then I'll talk about what are the things that you really need to pay attention to when choosing between the different types of plans. And again, I mentioned numbers, so we will be going over which one is the cheapest option to go with under certain circumstances. And by the way, these plans are the same across all of Garmin's inReach devices. I personally have the inReach Mini, but if you have some other inReach, again, these plans are still the same. And also, as always, this video is not sponsored by Garmin. I did buy the inReach Mini with my own money, and I do pay for the plans with my own money. And also, just as a little caveat, I think this should be obvious, but all of the different features and pricing that I'm mentioning today about the plans are just good as of today. Okay, so before I talk about which plan might be best for you, I first want to go over all the different features of Garmin's plan. And we're going to be taking a look at this table from Garmin that shows all of the different plans and what the, uh, the differences are between the features. So we're gonna take a look at this a lot throughout the video. So first, let's go from the top down and talk about what each of these things are. All right, so Garmin has three different levels of plans. They have safety, recreation, and expedition. Uh, safety is the cheapest, expedition costs the most money, and with each one you get different levels of each of the features. So let's start off at the very top of the features and work our way down. And first off is SOS messages. So you have an unlimited number of SOS messages you can send across all three plans. So you press that SOS button, it contacts first responders, which send help to your location. Next up are custom text messages. And this is really the bread and butter of the inReach devices. So this represents how many text messages you can both send and or receive with your inReach plan. Now they're limited to 160 characters, just like a standard text message, but if, even if you go over that 160 characters, the message will still send. It just counts as multiple messages depending on how long that message is. So you get 10 messages under the safety plan, 40 with recreation, and unlimited with expedition. And keep in mind that I said this represents both the messages that you send and receive. So if you send somebody a message that you're at your campsite for the night, and they respond with, okay, that's gonna count as two messages. And this is one of the biggest tips I can provide when it comes to really making your messages last longer with your plans. Make sure that your friends and family back home know that they should only send you a message if there's a real emergency or a big important reason to do so. So they don't just waste your messages by sending you a bunch of, you know, garbage. I famously had my in-laws send me an inReach message that Return of the Jedi was on Channel 7. And as you can probably tell from my shirt, I generally appreciate that type of information, but I really don't need to know that while I'm backpacking. Something else to keep in mind is that there are overage charges with text messages. So if you go over your monthly allotment for your text messages, you can still send and receive messages that will still work, but you will be charged 50 cents per message that you send and or receive over your monthly cap. One more thing to keep in mind about text messages, if you send a group message, so let's say you send the same message to three different people, that's going to count as three messages. Now another message type that you get are preset messages and you get an unlimited amount of preset messages that you can send across all three plans. And this is actually what I use the inReach for probably 90% of the time. And what you have to do with these is you have to log into your Garmin account before you go out on the trail and type up three different preset messages that you get. So you type up your message that you want, as well as the recipients that you want to send it to. Now you can only send preset messages from the device itself. You cannot do it on the EarthMate app. But fortunately, it's really easy to do, at least on the inReach Mini. So all you have to do is go into your messages, and then within there, there is an option for sending a preset message. 
and then you go into that and you can choose between your three different presets. Moving on, I'm going to group the next three things and talk about them all together. And that is your tracking intervals, your send slash track points, and your location requests. So every Garmin account comes with something called a map share page. And you can send a link to your map share page to your friends and family back home so that if you have tracking turned on your device, then they can see where you have been on a map. And that's what the tracking intervals represent. So with the safety and recreation plan, you can send a tracking point to your map share page every 10 minutes or more. And with expedition, it's every two minutes or more. And I think the rest of the intervals are something like 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, and four hours. And then the one below that, the send slash track point. So it's 10 cents per track that you send to your map share page with the safety plan, but then with recreation and expedition, it's unlimited. So you're not charged every time you send a tracking point to MapShare. And then below that, the location request. So on your MapShare page, there's a button that your friends and family can press to request your location. So if they haven't heard from you in a while, maybe you were supposed to check in a long time ago and they haven't heard from you, they can go onto your MapShare page click that location request and it will tell them where you are. So if they see that you're miles away from where you're supposed to be on the trail, then that gives them a hint that something is wrong. And just like with sending your tracking points, it costs 10 cents per location request for the safety plan and it's unlimited for recreation and expedition. Now, one important thing to keep in mind about this, you can still use your inReach to simply log your location on the device itself without actually sending your location to your MapShare page. So if you don't care about doing that with your, your MapShare page and all you want to do is to be able to track yourself along the trail that you can then export that data out and use it with some mapping software or something, you can do that with the inReach device and it's completely separate than uh, from sending your, uh, your tracking uh, locations to your MapShare page. So this is called logging your location and it does not cost anything in terms of your plan. And you can actually go down to very small intervals, all the way down to a second uh, for, for this kind of logging tracking. But keep in mind that if you do that, it's really going to eat up your battery, of course. And you can actually also not even use the inReach device to log your location. You can also use your phone's GPS to do that through the EarthMate app. So if you don't have your inReach connected to your phone via Bluetooth and you start tracking, it will ask you if you instead want to use your phone's GPS to log your location and you can choose yes if you choose to do so. So just keep all that in mind when it comes to tracking. I know that can be a bit confusing with the inReaches, but basically it just comes down to you can either send your location to your MapShare page on different intervals that you specify, or you can just log your location on the inReach device itself, and that does not count against anything with your plan. Okay, the last three things all have to do with weather forecasts. There's basic weather, premium weather, and marine weather. With basic weather, you get a 48-hour forecast based on your location. Day one is broken up into one to two hour intervals, and the remaining is broken up into six hour intervals. With premium weather, it extends that forecast out to seven days, and with premium marine weather, it's the same thing as the premium forecast, except it also includes things like ocean currents, wave height, and visibility. So those are all the features of the inReach plans, but you also need to choose whether you want to go with an annual plan or a month-to-month -month freedom plan. The annual plan requires a one-year commitment, but because of that, it's cheaper on a monthly basis. While the freedom plan does not require any commitment, so you are free to cancel it for any month throughout the year that you're not going to be using the plan. But because of that, it is more expensive on a monthly basis. So the Freedom Plan is kind of nice for anyone that doesn't go backpacking very often, or maybe you just don't go backpacking during the winter and you don't want to have to pay for the plan while you're not on the trail. A couple other things to keep in mind with these two plans is that the annual plan does charge a one-time 1995 activation fee, while the Freedom Plan charges an annual 24.95 fee on top of the monthly rate. 
Now, if you're someone who does not go backpacking every single month, you might be thinking that the Freedom Plan is a good option for you. But here's where we really need to dive into the numbers to find out which is the cheapest. So let's start talking about a comparison between the Freedom and Annual Plans, and then comparison between Safety, Recreation, and Expedition. So when choosing between the Annual and Freedom Plan and trying to figure out which one is going to be cheapest for you, you need to find the break-even number in months. What this represents is if you went with the Freedom Plan, how many months would you need to deactivate your plan in order for it to be cheaper than going with the Annual Plan, which you'll remember has a lower monthly cost. Now, in doing this analysis, I did factor in the annual $24.95 fee that comes with the Freedom Plans, but I did not include the one-time $19.95 activation fee for the annual plan. And I did that because I'm really trying to take a long-term look at these two plans. And since you have to pay that $24.95 every single year for the Freedom Plans, but the annual plan is just a one-time fee, that's why I included it on the Freedom Plan, but not on the annual plan. Okay, so if you're trying to decide between the annual or the Freedom Plans, the break-even amount is the same for both the safety and the recreation level. And that break-even is 4.1 months. So in other words, if you do not use your inReach for at least five months throughout the year, then it is cheaper to go with the Freedom Plan under both the safety and recreation level. And if you don't use your inReach for four months throughout the year, then it's about the same price between annual and freedom at the safety and recreation levels. But with the expedition level, the break-even number is actually a little bit lower. It's 3.2. So in other words, if you have the expedition level and you don't use your inReach for at least four months throughout the year, then it's cheaper to go with the freedom plan. And if you don't use your inReach for about three months throughout the year, then it's relatively the same price between freedom and annual with the expedition plan. So that's how you choose between the annual or freedom plans. So now let's decide between the safety, recreation, and expedition plans. So when making this decision, you really have to look at what are the differences between each of these three levels. So I highlighted all the differences on the table, and you can see that there are really just three main differences. It has to do with your text messages, your location tracking and location requests, and your basic weather. Okay, so let's start off with custom text messages. And we're first gonna take a look at deciding between the safety plan and the recreation plan. Now, when comparing the safety and recreation plans, you might be tempted to think that since the safety plan only includes 10 messages, that it might be better just to bump up to the re recreation plan since it includes 40 messages. But that's not necessarily true because remember, you can still send and receive messages even if you go over your monthly cap, you just have to pay that 50 cent overage fee. So what we need to do is find the break even number again, but this time it's going to be the number of messages that you need to send in order to make it cheaper to go with the recreation option. So when you're deciding between the safety and recreation levels, if you have the annual plan, then the break-even number is 37 messages. And if you have the freedom plan, the break-even number is 51 messages. Now obviously 37 and 51 are much higher than the 10 messages you get with the safety plan. But that's because even though there are overage charges with, uh, with going over your monthly cap, it's still cheaper just to pay those overage charges uh, then have to upgrade to a more expensive plan and pay that more expensive monthly rate. At least up until, again, 37 messages total for the annual plan or 51 for the freedom plan. So at that point, it's cheaper just to go with the recreation option. Now, likewise, we can do the same analysis when choosing between the recreation and expedition plans. And the break-even amount for recreation versus expedition, if you have the annual option, is 91 messages. And it's 101 messages if you have the freedom plan. So again, what this means is that despite the overage charges, it is still cheaper to go with the recreation plan versus expedition, as long as you send less than 91 messages each month under the annual plan or less than 101 messages a month under the freedom plan. Okay, so messages are just one consideration. If you also want to send 
uh, your location to your map share page, then you also need to take a look at that difference. And you'll remember that with the safety plan, it costs 10 cents every time you want to send your location to your map share page and or if someone back at home requests your location. But with the recreation and expedition plans, you get an unlimited number of those tracking points and location requests. So because it's unlimited for both recreation and expedition, I'm really just gonna be comparing what's cheaper to go with in terms of safety versus recreation. The only real reason then to choose expedition over the recreation option when it comes to tracking is the fact that you can uh, send those tracking points at a more increased interval. It goes down to two minutes instead of 10 minutes. So just like everything else, we need to find the break even number, and this time it represents how many tracking points you send to your MapShare page and or how many location requests from somebody back home. And we do that using the 10 cent per tracking point sent or location request that comes with the safety plan. So if you have the annual option and you're choosing between safety and recreation in terms of tracking points, then it is cheaper to go with the recreation plan if you send at least 131 tracking points. And under the freedom option, that bumps it up to at least 201 tracking points. So those are really all the main considerations that you need to make when choosing between the safety, recreation, and expedition levels. Now, I did mention that there is also a difference between the basic weather options. So with the safety and recreation plans, it costs you one text message for every time you get a forecast uh, from your monthly allotment. But with the expedition plan, it is unlimited because you have an unlimited number of messages. But because this relies on the number of text messages that you have, it would be the exact same analysis that we did for the text message break-even point. Now, for me personally, I have the safety plan, which has been more than enough for what I need. So on average, I typically go backpacking about once a month throughout the year. Some months I might not go at all, other months I might go more than once, uh, but about once a month uh, has been my average. And again, the safety plan has been just fine. And because I rely on my free preset messages so much, I rarely go over my 10 text message allotment for the month. And I have never even come close to reaching that break even point that would make the recreation plan cheaper for me. Now I started off with the freedom plan because I thought it would be a, a good idea not to have to pay for those months that I didn't go backpacking. Uh, but I, I eventually realized that after doing this break even analysis, it, it's a lot cheaper for me to go with the annual plan since I do tend to go backpacking all year long. Well, I hope this was helpful for you. As always, stick around for some bloopers and the next time you're on the trail, enjoying your inReach device. Have fun out there. Punching the numbers to help Feb Fisa Fasafa varying levels of stuff that comes with this varying levels of stuff man is it hot in here with the expedition wave height visibility and ocean something freedom <laughs> i've seen braveheart too many times it's not that hard you need to find the <coughs> if you <coughs> so <coughs> man i just can't stop burping Jeez, this is just confusing.